Eccentric here at Team Eccentric. I'm bringing you guys my True Draco deck profile as of August 2018. Um, I feel like this deck is a safe pick to profile as of right now, considering I don't feel that it will be uh, a target for the up and coming ban list supposed to be coming out. Um, I didn't want to profile like Mermail or anything like that, considering that those decks use Firewall Dragons, and I feel like that's probably going to main, probably going to be the main target of Konami's next ban list. So that being said, I figured this deck, being that it A doesn't have an extra deck, and B hasn't really been performing, you know, at the most com at the most competitive level, um, as well as it could be. I feel like you know the deck is safe regarding the ban list, so you know it could be a safe pick for, for a profile. Um, I will also be bringing you guys some dual videos with this. Um, you know, the deck is really, really fun, very, very simple to play. In a way, it's very similar to the uh, Phantasm Sp uh, Spiral deck that I profiled recently. I will be doing some more dual videos with that first before I start any dual videos with this. Um, I've just been really busy working and focusing on skateboarding, trying to get my last licks in with that before the uh, autumn and winter comes. So, um, all that being noted, I figure I'll get right into the profile and I'll start it off with the best monster in the deck, Triple Amano Iwato, or as it's known uh, popularly around here, Triple Rocky Boy. You normal summon this, all monster effects on both sides of the field are negated. This is really, really, really good. Um, it's, it's a spirit monster, so at the end phase of the turn, it bounces back to your hand. And the best part about this card is that you can resolve Demise first and then this. So you can... Act, you can resolve Demise's discard effect, then resolve this and add it back to the hand. Just really, really busted. After that, we're playing Triple Majesty Maiden. Uh, this one adds your True Draco monsters from your deck to your hand. Um, when your opponent activates something, you can chain this and add a True Draco monster from your deck to the hand. Also, um, all True Draco monsters have the clause where you can tribute uh, continuous spells or traps on your field in order to summon them. So this is just very, very easy to summon. Um, plus, with the field spell, it becomes a 26 beater, so it's pretty good. Um, after that, I'm playing double Ignis Heat. I know a lot of people opt to play three, but I feel like two is probably the more optimal number, in my personal opinion, considering um, I don't want to draw into uh, too many monsters with cards in my eyes, and I feel like playing three of this would make me see too many multiples. I'm already playing three Majesty Maiden, so I feel like that's just too many. Um, so I feel like two is probably the most optimal number for me. And then after that, I'm playing one Dynamite Knights, uh, probably the best True Draco as of right now. I tried Metaltron, I did not like it. Um, you know, I mean, it did, you know, come up sometimes where I needed kind of a 3K beater, but uh, it's just not relevant, really. It's It doesn't really do much for you, and if it gets kaiju or anything like that, you're screwed. So uh, after that, we're playing Triple uh, Dragonic Diagram. This is the best card in the deck, in my personal opinion, it's MVP. It's to add any True Draco or True King card from your deck to your hand. This card is amazing. It's not once per turn, it's once per turn per copy. So if you have this hand of terraforming, you get to basically resolve this twice as long as your opponent doesn't have some kind of interruption. It's great. Uh, after that, I'm playing Triple True Draco Heritage. This is essentially a pot of greed if you can resolve it right. Um, and it's backer removal. It's just amazing. Just, you know, adds to the consistency of the deck. After that, Triple Disciples. This is basically the Diagosto Emerald of the deck. It's built in to the uh, archetypal name, which is great because you can add back basically any True Draco card you want. It's just amazing. Uh, it just allows for the deck to have some, uh, you know, uh, longevity and some uh, recursion plays. It's just great. So um, after that, we're playing Triple Cards of Demise. This is the best, um, probably the best, uh, plus card in the deck. You just go so plus with this card. It's so ridiculous. Um, then after that, triple terraforming to get to the diagrams. Triple uh, pot of duality because it's duality. It's just great in this deck because you're not really special summoning a lot and the only times you really are is off of True King's Return and even then it's very, very rare that you really want to special summon off of that because I am playing the Monarchs Erupt in this so, you know, special summoning really doesn't do much for you. Then I'm playing one Storm Forth. After that, now we're getting to the traps. We're playing triple of the best trap card, in my personal opinion, in this deck, the Monarchs Erupt. Um, as long as you control a tribute summon monster, uh, both sides of the field uh, have non-tribute summon monsters effects negated. It's essentially skill drain, skill drain for everything except your true Dracos. It's just great. Um, it slows down a lot of plays. After that, we have triple uh, true Draco Apocalypse. Um, just being able to reduce your opponent's attack points as well as destroy an opponent's monster 
It's just amazing. You can't activate both effects in the same chain, however, um, you can activate uh, them both in one turn. It's pretty good, though. Uh, after that, we're playing one True King's Return because this is an imperative card. Uh, you know, being able to special summon monsters back from the graveyard, it can come up. And even then, um, you can always use those monsters as tribute, fo uh, tribute fodder instead of having to tribute your spells and traps, which can kind of benefit you in a lot of ways. Um, and then for the last few trap cards, we're playing Triple Anti Spell Fragrance um, because shutting down spell reliant decks is really good. One Imperial Order because, again, shutting down spell reliant decks is really good. And then one Solemn Judgment because it is Solemn Judgment, the best trap card in the game. So uh, that was my True Draco deck profile, guys. Like I said, I'm not really doing a side deck, and obviously, uh, you know, playing this card kind of, you know, omits me from playing an extra deck. Um, so, you know, I mean, the deck is really, really good, and as said, I will be bringing you guys some dual videos, um, you know, some, you know, all that stuff will be coming in the near future. I've just been super busy, so, like, and, you know, it's not as if I haven't, you know, warned you guys that I will only be posting at my leisure. Um, you know, I do still enjoy the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I just have priorities and life situations that come up. Um, and I also uh, wanted to let you guys know that I will be doing a Shadows of Valhalla box opening. Um, potentially uh, a double box opening um, on Friday, because that box is going to be... That, that, like, that set is just amazing. And depending on how things roll, I may be getting a Patreon started and getting all that stuff started so that maybe we can start doing giveaways and, and you know, making team eccentric mats and shirts and all that stuff. It would be really, really cool to get that stuff started um, just for fun, you know, just kind of a shits and giggles thing on, um, you know, I mean, I have been more focused on skateboarding because it is kind of something that I prefer to focus on, but that doesn't mean that team eccentric can't be something to do uh, on the side. So uh, with all of that noted, uh, Eric here, Team Eccentric, and I'm signing out. Rate and subscribe, leave your comments and ideas in the comments section below, and don't hesitate to give us respectful suggestions on content you want to see. Eric on behalf of the team saying take care, and Team Eccentric out.